This briefing is in two parts. The first part will be on the record with uh, Secretary Cohen and Chairman Shelton. Then we'll have a background briefing by senior intelligence officials afterwards. Secretary Cohen. Good afternoon. As you've already heard from President Clinton, uh, we have today conducted military strikes at several facilities that have supported international terrorist groups. The United States and the rest of the community of civilized nations have made it clear time and time again that the violence and the bloodshed and the murderous acts of international terrorists will not be tolerated. Today's military strikes against those terrorist camps and facilities are a part of a continuing effort to defend U.S. citizens and interests abroad against the very real threat posed by international terrorists. In the wake of the tragic and treacherous attacks on our embassies in East Africa, and in light of the continuing patterns of specific threats against U.S. citizens and facilities, we've taken these actions to reduce the ability of these terrorist organizations to train and equip their misguided followers, or to acquire weapons of mass destruction for their use in campaigns of terror. We recognize that these strikes will not eliminate the problem, but our message is clear. There will be no sanctuary for terrorists and no limit to our resolve to defend American citizens and our interests, our ideals of democracy and law against these cowardly attacks. Those who attack our people will find no safe place, no refuge from the long arm of justice. General Shelton is going to provide you with as much operational detail as we can on the facilities that have been struck, but I need to forewarn you, there will not be much operational detail provided. We are engaged in a difficult confrontation with the forces of international terrorism, the unique nature of the terrorist threat, the lack of regard for international law, the willingness to specifically target innocent civilians, transnational operations which defy traditional means of influence, all of these factors and more have forced us to adopt some very different approaches to the problem. And therefore, we do not intend to provide, at least for now, the specific numbers or units of U U.S. military forces that uh, have been involved, nor will we discuss the specific weapons and tactics employed in these strikes. And with that, uh, General Shelton will give you some details about the facilities that we targeted and why they were chosen. Excuse me, Mr. Secretary, could you just briefly tell us at least whether these were airstrikes or, or no. missiles? The chairman is going to give you a, a, a brief uh, summation of what targets were attacked. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Good afternoon. First, let me underscore what Secretary Cohen has said. This is not simply a response to some specific act, but a concerted effort to defend U.S. citizens and our interests around the globe against a very real and a very deadly terrorist threat. As many of you are aware, our intelligence community has provided us with convincing information based on a variety of intelligence sources that Osama bin Laden's network of terrorists was involved in the planning, the financing, and the execution of the attacks on U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, attacks that killed over 300 people, including 12 Americans, and wounded thousands more. This is by no means the first time that bin Laden network has been connected to terrorist attacks. Bin Laden himself has admitted to attempting to kill American servicemen on their way to and serving in our humanitarian mission to Somalia in 1992. His supporters and followers have tried to assassinate the president of Egypt and even the pope. And as recently as three months ago, Bin Laden himself repeated his fatwa against Americans in order to attack Americans and our allies throughout the world and to make no distinction between military and civilians, including women and children. The facilities we struck today in Afghanistan and Sudan are important parts of the bin Laden network of terrorist groups. At 1.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, simultaneous military strikes were carried out against known terrorist training facilities in remote regions of Afghanistan and an industrial facility in Khartoum, Sudan. The target selected and the timing of the strikes, 7.30 p.m. in Sudan and 10 p.m. in Afghanistan, were part of our overall effort to minimize collateral damage at the sites. 
Now if I can direct your attention to these photo boards. The three facilities in Afghanistan we struck are the Zawa Kali al Badr base camp, training camp, and support complex. A number of terrorist groups are associated with these facilities, including bin Laden's al Qadar, the armed Islamic group, and the Egyptian Islamic Jihad. These bases provide refuge for terrorists, house the infrastructure for their funding international travel, and are used to train terrorists in the tactics and weapons of international terrorism. The base camp is the main headquarters facility for the complex, and it includes storage, housing, training, and administration facilities for the complex. It is also the key command and control node. The support camp is the primary logistics area for the complex and includes storage for a large amount of weapons and ammunition. The four primary training camps, one of which is shown here, are used for training terrorist tactics, indoctrination, weapons, and the use of Im improvised explosive devices. Within the camp are numerous structures, tent stands, obstacle courses, firing ranges, and bermed areas for explosive testing and training. The blow up of the West Camp is indicative of the camp characteristics in general and includes evidence of continuing expansion of the facilities. We have also had con convincing information that for some time the Bin Laden network has been actively seeking to acquire weapons of mass destruction, including chemical weapons, for use against U.S. citizens and our interests around the world. This next photo is for the Shifa chemical complex in northeast Khartoum, Sudan. The intelligence community is confident that this facility is involved in the production of chemical weapons agents, including precursor chemicals for deadly V-series of nerve agents like, for example, VX. We also know that bin Laden has extensive ties to the Sudanese government, which controls this chemical facility. Before taking your questions, let me emphasize that although we are confident that Osama bin Laden's network was involved in the criminal attack on embassies and the murder of more than 300 innocent victims, the actions we have taken today should not be viewed simply as retali retaliation for those attacks. Rather, as the President and his Secretary Cohen have said, this has been an exercise of self-defense against an imminent and continuing terrorist threat. There can be no safe haven for terrorists. The international community must not tolerate such acts, nor accept those nations who would aid or harbor terrorists. We owe it to our citizens and to the citizens of all law-abiding nations to, to do all that we can to prevent terrorist actions and to prevent, bring those responsible for spreading hate and death to justice. And with that, Secretary Cohen and I will take your questions. Mr. Secretary, could you tell us, did this just involve air strikes or missile strikes or were troops actually put on the ground? I'll be careful early on. Any well, other for the day. time being, uh, we are not going to discuss this uh, in view of the fact that there may be other operations that might be required. Uh, we do not want to place uh, any of our forces uh, in any kind of uh, jeopardy or compromise their position. So for the time being, we're going to simply indicate that strikes were carried out, and then uh, we will at a later time uh, discuss that. Well, these three strikes, are they, still, uh, are they still going on or the strikes ended? Uh, the strikes should have ended. Mr. Secretary, where are the, what are the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden right now? Do you believe that you killed him in these strikes? Uh, I have no idea where he is uh, at this time. And uh, we were de designed this operation to attack his infrastructure, and uh, that's precisely what we have do done. Do you know whether he was in any of these facilities when uh, the strikes occurred? We do not know. Were there any, what were some of the that barometer? was not our design. Our design was to take down this structure, which is responsible for training uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of terrorists. What was your What were some of the barometers of success here on the plant and also on the camps? Total destruction part. Can you give us a sense? Uh, our plan was to attack uh, these sites uh, with sufficient uh, power to uh, to certainly disrupt them and uh, hopefully destroy them. Um, some of these are um, uh, solid structures, others are, uh, are less so. Uh, but uh, we believe that given the, uh, the targeting that was done uh, with the, uh, the capability that was unleashed, uh, it would uh, cause sufficient damage to disrupt them for some time. 
Sir, uh, were there uh, any uh, U.S. casualties in, the, in these raids? Uh, not to our knowledge, no. Have you had any BBA yet? Too early uh, to make that assessment just yet. Could you also clarify, was it one training camp? You said, I believe you said there were four. There are a total of four training camps. All four were hit. We only addressed uh, one of those so today. It's, is it correct, then, that it's seven sites in Afghanistan, essentially, that were within the one comp that make up the one complex, seven yes. One complex, thank you. Seven sites in Afghanistan? That make up the one complex, yes. Could, could you tell us where this is in Afghanistan, generally? It's uh, basic, basic, basically about 94 miles uh, south of Kabul. Uh, proximity to the, Tom, proximity to the uh, Afghan border. It's just a few kilometers. Or to the Pakistani border. A few kilometers to the Pakistan border. It's in uh, just part of Afghanistan right here. Did uh, Pakistan uh, provide permission for overflight, or were they, did they participate in any way? Well, we're not going to discuss any operational uh, details of this. Did any other country take part in these raids, or was it just the United States? No, this was simply uh, the United States. Is this near, uh, in, in uh, Khartoum, is that a residential area that that's near? What sort of area is that? Uh, in Khartoum, the, the target was located in, a, in an industrial uh, complex area. It is, uh, there are surrounding facilities. We did, uh, we did everything we possibly could to minimize the collateral damage associated with that but it is in an industrial area, and so we would anticipate uh, very minimum uh, numbers of collateral damage. When did you get the first sense to plan this to execution? We're we talking nine or 10 hours or two, two days? We began, uh, as you know, it was just a week ago today uh, that all of us, uh, certainly the chairman and myself, uh, were out at Andrews Air Force Base uh, welcoming home uh, the bodies of 10 Americans uh, who died in the bombings. Uh, we indicated at that time uh, with our words, and now we're indicating with our deeds, uh, that uh, American citizens were not going to be allowed to be uh, attacked with impunity. Uh, from that moment uh, forward, certainly, we intensified the information gathering to try and track down those uh, responsible for the, the, this uh, terrorist action. It's been a combination of um, sources of information from a variety of places that uh, led us uh, to the conclusion that uh, Osama bin Laden's terror network was associated and responsible for this uh, bombing. Our effort was to try to uh, target those facilities uh, and uh, infrastructure uh, that allow him to continue to train terrorists to carry out uh, terrorist operations. In addition, as the chairman has just said, we also had uh, some very um, uh, compelling information as far as uh, threats against uh, other uh, Americans, and a combination of the, uh, uh, the attacks that were made, coupled with uh, the threat of future tax attacks to come, uh, certainly intensified our effort uh, to uh, target these facilities. Are you at all concerned, Mr. Secretary, that these uh, strikes may, in fact, pro provoke uh, retaliation somewhere, in fact, may you know, encourage more aggressive uh, terrorist actions? It has been a long history of uh, terrorist actions directed against innocent American people. Um, we believe that a number of other terrorist uh, activities and plans were underway. We have an absolute obligation, indeed a duty, and we'd be derelict in that duty if we did not take action to interrupt uh, those plans and to try to insulate uh, American people and our friends from these activities. So I am satisfied that uh, this action uh, will help um, prevent some of those plans from being carried forward, but they were determined to carry forward more terrorist actions. And so by us taking action now, we hope to prevent more Americans from dying in the future. Were the forces involved U.S. Uh, based forces, or were they from operating out of uh, third countries? Uh, let me just say they're U.S. forces, period. Uh, the, other, the other plans uh, that were, the other things that were being planned, did they also involve uh, truck bombings, or uh, there was an allusion to uh, chemical weapons? Uh, did any of them involve the use of, uh, or planned use of chemical weapons? It was uh, the information that we had led us to, uh, to the conclusion that future uh, activities, uh, terrorist activities were planned. Uh, it was not specific in terms of whether it would be a bomb or other types of terrorist actions. Uh, that's not something that uh, we would try to um, uh, be uh, driven by. 
but we anticipated that it could be future uh, truck bombs as we saw in the, uh, the past cases. Uh, and so we took uh, this action uh, to, uh, again, interrupt uh, the training of these types of acti activities. Secondly, we had information that led us uh, to believe that Osama bin Laden and his organization were indeed trying to acquire uh, chemical weapons and to utilize them in future activities. Do you currently has chemical weapons? Uh, we don't know that uh, at this point. Uh, what we do know is the facility that was targeted uh, in uh, Khartoum uh, produced the precursor chemicals that would allow the uh, production of a type of uh, VX uh, nerve agent uh, that uh, has been talked about at some length. Was that, facility, was that facility being used to assist terrorists with the knowledge of the Sudanese government? Uh, you'll have to ask the Sudanese uh, government uh, on that account. We do know that he's had an association in the past with the Sudanese government. We do know that he has had some financial interests in uh, contributing to the, uh, this particular facility. Uh, whether or not uh, it's with the full knowledge of the Sudanese government remains uh, to be determined. Secretary, I came in late, I, so I apologize if this question has been asked. Some Americans are going to say this bears a striking resemblance to Wag the Dog. Two questions, have you seen the movie? And second, uh, how do you uh, respond to people who think that? Um, the only motivation driving this action today was our absolute obligation to protect the American people from terrorist activities. That is the sole motivation. No other consideration has been in, in, involved. The chairman and I have worked uh, with uh, others for the past week, night and day, working with the community, uh, our intelligence community, and working with others. The only factors involved were to prevent the kind of terrorist action that killed 12 Americans last week and injured so many uh, hundreds and indeed thousands more, and that is the only factor under consideration. When, when did you know that you were going to make these strikes? How soon uh, after the bombings in uh, Kenya and Tanzania did you have sufficient intelligence to know you're going to strike? Second part, and forgive me if you've uh, covered this already, even though you won't say whether these were airstrikes or what kind, did they come out of CENTCOM in the Middle East or come out of CONUS? Uh, I'm not going to discuss where they came out of. Um, the planning has been underway for several days. Uh, we have been meeting, as I've indicated before, nearly around the clock for the past uh, week, uh, gathering information, satisfying ourselves uh, in terms of who was responsible, which organization was linked to the, uh, the terrorist bombings. Also, in trying to deal with the, uh, the threats that were coming in uh, fairly rapidly about more terrorist activities planned against Americans. Uh, and so it's been an evolving process. Once we were satisfied, then uh, the plans uh, were um, worked up by our, uh, our, our military. The Secretary, Chairman, you said, I'm sorry, you said seven sites, and I, it, looks like, it looks like six sites. Yeah, um, uh, because one, there's an arrow leading, leading to one site. There are a total. There's the base camp, there's the, the uh, support facility itself, and a total of four training sites. Six. six sites. Was there was there any, can you tell me, did you, uh, what the chain of events was? Did uh, the president order this strike? Was, was it you? And when was that decision made? Uh, the president, as commander in chief, uh, ordered these strikes. When was that? Uh, they were uh, during the course of the past uh, 24 hours. Was Bin Laden himself targeted personally? Uh, no. We were targeting these facilities and his infrastructure. Was this made by CENTCOM or Special Operations Com? Can you even uh, say what uh, what uh, uh, sink was in charge of this operation? We uh, we will not comment on the types of forces or, or types of uh, platforms that we used in this for operational reasons. Uh, and I might add, I understand your frustration with the uh, you've got a job to do and you'd like to know as much about the details as you can. Uh, I have a job to do, and that is to ensure that whatever orders the Commander-in-Chief uh, gives are carried out in a very effective manner, and secondly, to ensure that we take care of the welfare of the, of the men and women in uniform. Uh, I take that obligation very seriously. Uh, it, after Desert Storm, as I recall very well, a lot of detail was, was put out about how we attack different targets, things of this nature. We're in a different ball game today. This is a uh, this, we're going against a terrorist organization, and that calls for some different uh, techniques. How close to weaponizing a chemical weapon was uh, the cartoon plant. Uh, that's a judgment that uh, we can't make. We do know that um, 
this facility was used for the uh, production uh, of uh, precursor chemicals that could be used uh, for uh, VX, producing VX. Mr. Yeah. Secretary, could you say what evidence, that, what the evidence was that convinced you that uh, Osama bin Laden was uh, behind these bombings? Well, as um, uh, Ken indicated before, you're going to be given a, a briefing uh, following these remarks of ours, but it's been a series uh, of uh, reports that we have analyzed, uh, statements made by Osama bin Laden himself, uh, other information coming in as recently as uh, yesterday about future attacks being planned against uh, the United States. But uh, uh, we are satisfied there has been a convincing uh, body of evidence that leads us to this conclusion. Is Bin Laden a legitimate military target himself, personally? To the extent that uh, he or his organization have declared war upon the United States uh, or our interests, uh, then uh, uh, he certainly is engaged in an act of war. Was there a specific threat that forced you to act today? I'm sorry? Was there a specific threat that forced you to act today rather than tomorrow or some other point? No, we have uh, been planning this uh, for several days now, and um, we decided to go forward uh, today. Do you believe this closes the pipeline on any um, imminent activity, or do you think something could still be have? This doesn't foreclose anything. Uh, what we are prepared uh, and have to be prepared for is a, a long continuing effort to deal with terrorism. We are sending a very strong signal uh, that uh, there is no safe haven, there's no safe place to hide. There is no refuge for terrorists uh, who kill innocent uh, American people. And uh, that's the message that we're sending, and we will continue in that effort. To the extent that other activities have been planned or indeed are carried out, uh, they will be met uh, with um, a continuing response on the part of the United States. General Trump, can you comment on whether there was any resistance at all in these attacks? Resistance in terms of? Against our forces, I mean. Uh, no, that's an operational level of detail that I, I prefer not to share at this time. Is there any? Did you get permission from Sudan and from Afghanistan to wage these, or did you notify the governments in power? Again, uh, another operational matter that we're not going to discuss. Could you tell us whether all services were involved or? No. Could you go into any detail? No. Do you say if there were any casualties among the people at the camps in Sudan? It's too early to make any assessment at this point. How active were the camps in terms of training? dormant uh, skeleton crews, or what, what can you say about that? They have been uh, active uh, for uh, a period of time, uh, and that activity continued through this week. Any concerns about plume problems in Khartoum? Uh, we, uh, we were, and the chairman can address that, but a detailed analysis uh, was made, and uh, we're satisfied that there was low risk uh, of uh, collateral damage. General, could you say whether these camps involved uh, Hundreds of people, uh, dozens, scores. Can you give us any rough estimate on the number of personnel involved on the ground? In terms of uh, the intelligence, has indicated that on occasion there were up to 600 that were in the uh, the one facility in, in Afghanistan at at, at, uh, on, at different periods of time, and it has varied over time. Which facility, General? The complex the whole, itself. The whole, the whole six-site complex here. Right. And it could range anywhere from zero to that amount, so there's no way of telling it the same. Were, were the imminent threats uh, against other embassies or, or uh, yes. military yeah. yes, bases? Yes, yes. Military bases as well, U.S. military uh, facilities? Well, that's something we always take into account, that uh, uh, force protection is at the very top of uh, the agenda as far as we're concerned and when our forces are forward deployed. And, um, and so our military installations all uh, are potential uh, uh, targets of, a, of a terrorists, so um, we take that into account. But these uh, terrorist threats were more directed toward our embassies. Do you have any indication when some more information might be available on forces used in the next day or two? Is there any indication? Been, say several days uh, away. Are you keeping the forces on standby for follow-on action? Um, the answer is we will have a capacity uh, to conduct other operations if, uh, if we need to do so. General Shelton, you're going to be, the, the word assassination is going to come up, that bin Laden was targeted for assassination. Under our current rules of war, op, can he, is he a legitimate military target? Tony, I think the best response I could give you to that is, as the Secretary has, uh, has previously indicated, 
Uh, we were not going directly after Osama bin Laden. It is, was an attack on his network of terrorist groups, as I think you can see from the targets. And uh, we will continue to go after that if we feel like it's appropriate and if the threats to Americans or American interests continue. Could you tell us again what the linkage was between the, the chemical plant in Khartoum and the Laden noise organization? What action was there? Uh, we do know that uh, he had um, contributed to this particular facility. Uh, we do know that he has had an interest in acquiring uh, chemical weapons. We do know that this facility um, produces the precursors that can uh, result in the production of uh, VX, and that was a sufficient connection for us. The details of some of the additional terrorist plots provided by those individuals already taken into custody in relation to the Africa bombings? I'm sorry. Did we learn of some of these terrorist plots, the other threats out there from the individuals already taken into custody in Kenya and Pakistan? Well, we acquired the information from a variety of sources, and I believe the combination of those sources led us to this uh, conclusion. Mr. Secretary, you stated here a couple of minutes ago that you wanted to send a signal that there is no safe haven, no place to hide from terrorist groups. Is that, does that represent a policy position that this administration has now embraced, and does that represent any break with the past? No, it's a consistent policy uh, that we have had. Uh, if there are states uh, who sponsor uh, terrorism, acts of terrorism, uh, they will be held accountable. If there are individuals uh, within uh, states who are being given a safe harbor and who fail to either turn over uh, individuals or provide uh, um, uh, an aiding and abetting of them, then uh, this is a signal that they will not be on the reach uh, of the United States. It, to the extent that these terrorists continue to threaten to target Americans, then uh, they, uh, they cannot feel that they are immune simply because they're in uh, some other uh, country. Okay. Thank you. We have to knock this off. We have a briefing followed immediately by senior intelligence officials who find background, so we'll have to shut the cameras off and the microphones. And this will start in uh, the next uh, 60 seconds.